Okay. Great. Um, welcome to my session on augmented reality using uh, JavaScript API. My name is Wolfgang Damm. I'm the lead software architect uh, with Wikitude. And I usually start off this talk with asking who of you already developed uh, with web technologies. But since we are here at the JavaScript conference, I might not ask this question. But what interests me is who of you already developed a mobile application? OK, so a, a few. And did you use web technologies for that? So who use, uh, use web technologies for developing the mobile application? iOS, OK. So um, basically, I think uh, if you're used to web technologies or mobile uh, development, uh, this talk will be for you. Um, and I did um, what I've planned is a first introduction to what we do, uh, what augmented reality is, and what we offer, and then switch over to an overview of our actual SDK and the API, how that works, how you can uh, create augmented reality experiences with, with it, and then go into detail about what features are included and uh, give you a few examples. Um, yeah, and since we're here at a technical conference, uh, I have some source code prepared, so just a warning. Okay, um, so Wikitude is um, our company, and it's, it's also the name of our augmented reality browser, which was uh, the first augmented reality browser uh, released in 2008. And I should start explaining what augmented reality is. Probably a few of you uh, might already know it, but for the others, uh, when we talk about augmented reality, we mean that you uh, take the rea reality and overlay virtual information on top of it. So a typical use case for our augmented reality browser is that we visualize the um, points that are around you on top of the camera. As an example, if you are in Paris and you're looking at the Eiffel Tower with your mobile phone, you will actually uh, get a marker on the Eiffel Tower um, and you can click it to get more information. So when you move the, the camera, the marker actually stays on the Eiffel Tower, and if you move back, it comes into the vision. So that's augmented reality. Um, yeah, um, we have currently a global reach of about 10 million users in 32 languages and are, um, offer the application for all major mobile operating systems. We're also working together with the OGC on an augmented reality standard, uh, which is called uh, ARML, um, Augmented Reality Markup Language. It's currently a 2.0 and is a candidate standard within the OGC. Um, what I'm going to talk about today mostly is our augmented reality SDK uh, based on our core technology called Architect. And you can use that to write augmented reality experiences using web technology, being uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This SDK is already uh, in the hands of uh, more than 2 million uh, users and was downloaded uh, about 3,500 times from our website. We do work with partners or um, one of the partners I want to uh, point out that use our SDK is or was the London Olympics application, uh, which yeah, they used to implement augmented reality in their application. And also O2 for their new building in London, they have an uh, application that allows you to, if you're on the top of their building, to look around uh, London and to see uh, the sites marked. So here uh, I put a few use cases uh, we or our partners developed. It's just a small subset, but um, i like to explain a few concepts um, that you can do with it. So first up is a, is a game. Uh, it's a fun little game where a, a fly is put into the reality around the user, and you have to look for the fly, and once you have it in the field of vision, a uh, swatter comes up and smashes the fly and you get points for each smash, smashed fly. Um, 
What's uh, cool about that is that all the game graphics, the sweat, swatter and that stuff is all done in HTML5 using the canvas, so that works pretty well. Uh, we have uh, a Facebook use case where you uh, log into Facebook and can see the um, posts of your friends in your surroundings, so um, Facebook usually allows you to put the location in where you posted the message from and uh, we read that over the um, Facebook API and, and put the points there uh, where your friends were or posted. Um, so this example with Hotels.com um, is again a, a point of interest based uh, use case but it, allows, uh, it allowed them to put more information directly into augmented reality to visualize uh, um, the reviews of the user to a specific hotel so you can uh, grasp uh, how good the, co uh, the hotel is right from, from the first view. And it allo uh, also allowed them to put the price in there and to book right from uh, augmented reality. Um, the other uh, game on the right side was done by a game studio in Vienna and they used it to put colored bubbles all around the user and the game mechanics where you have to select the colored bubbles in a certain order. So you're turning around looking for the right colored bubble and then uh, pressing it. So this is how the SDK works and this is a concept uh, that um, is very important. It's w if you get it once, it's, it's simple and straightforward, but uh, let me first show you how it works. So we have three layers. We have uh, a simple web view that's a um, standard mobile browser web view um, and you can run all of the HTML, JavaScript and CSS you're uh, used to from the mobile browsers. But with one exception, it has a transparent body. So everything that um, shines through on the body shines actually through to the augmented reality view. And the augmented reality view we use to display the actually uh, the objects that are um, overlaid on the reality. And the back is in the back is the camera that is used to uh, visualize the reality. Um, so if we take this as an example, we have the camera in the background. We have the points that are actually where uh, where the hotels are. That's the augmented reality view. Those move, if, if the user moves, moves the camera, those move because they stay on the object. And we have the static head, heads up display that's it's used in hotels.com for displaying the logo and to have some buttons there for filtering. And that's what's actually written in HTML and that stays statically on top of everything. Here are two more examples. Uh, about what you can do with the H HTML that's overlaid. So you can use that for your complete uh, UI. Uh, you can have lists that neatly scroll up and down. Um, and for example, this is a filter they implemented with a pop-up. Once you click it, you can drag the sliders to um, search for specific res uh, hotels. Okay, um, so you're probably wondering uh, how you get started and that's pretty simple because you just write another HTML file. Um, the starting point is um, as simple as writing a web page, just an HTML page. You can use additional resources like uh, CSS and JavaScript as you would normally do in a web page, but the simplest form of um, this augmented reality experience is an HTML file. Uh, we call this uh, augmented reality experiences architect world um, and this architect world is then can then be used in uh, multiple scenarios. Uh, first of all, you can register it on our server and it will get, get delivered to our uh, users. So if you want to promote your brand, um, extend your reach, you can do that via our Wikitude application or you can use our SDK that's available for uh, Android, iOS, and the upcoming BlackBerry 10 platform to include uh, the augmented reality experience in your own application. 
And the neat thing is that you write the uh, augmented reality part only once and can deploy it to all of those platforms. Um, since we're here at a JavaScript conference, uh, you're probably familiar with PhoneGap, which, is, uh, which can be used to uh, develop native, uh, to develop iOS and Android application fully in uh, web technologies. So this fits quite well into our thinking, and so we did a PhoneGap plugin that allows you uh, to stay for the whole application in, inside the web world. And we're also coming out with an extension for Accelerator, which um, why did you kind of the same thing as PhoneGap. Okay, um, now let's uh, have a look at the features. Um, there are mainly two uh, areas of augmented reality. One is the geo-based augmented reality, and the other uh, thing is the image recognition. So geo-based is what I showed you earlier, the points of interest that are overlaid on top of the camera. And we use uh, the sensors from of the device to, um, to calculate where the points are on the camera. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, with geo-based, you um, should have an uh, accurate position, meaning um, GPS. It works with cell and Wi-Fi positioning, but it's not that accurate. Um, um, using our SDK, it's possible to include an indoor positioning system, which overcomes this pr problem. So, yeah, it's possible, but uh, usually when we talk about geo-based, um, AR, we're talking about outside use cases. With image recognition, which I'm coming to now, um, it's, it's independent because we are recognizing what's on the camera. So, for example, you can use um, a magazine page or your logo or pretty much any other uh, 2D image and it, um, and it can re register it and it will then be recognized in the camera feed. And that allows you to uh, overlay um, stuff directly on um, the recognized image. Okay, um, so those three uh, two areas are um, covered by the SDK. It's um, it's set up a little bit different, but uh, all of the other features that build on on, on those two areas they can be used uh, uh, interchangeably. Uh, what are the features? Um, we have um, a lot of triggers that allow you to react on, on clicks, for example, if the user clicks an object, or um, react if an object comes into the field of vision or leaves it. Uh, we have built in geofencing, so you can uh, check for uh, the user being in a certain location, leaving a certain location. Um, we have a, a few different visualization uh, stuff, which I'm coming to later on. Um, and we are um, currently integrating 3D, so you actually have 3D objects as well. Um, now uh, I want to give you a few uh, source code lines and, and talk about the features in, te in detail. Um, first, let's start with the geo-based content. Um, with geo-based content, uh, Usually, uh, you have them um, already. Uh, you have the latitude and longitude already, and that's what you need to define first. So, here uh, this line AR geolocation, and we give the um, constructor the latitude and longitude. The next thing is you want to define how this object should look like. So, this could be some text. This could be images. This could be um, HTML. Um, and in this example, we are drawing a simple circle. So uh, here, this line, new AR circle, uh, creates a drawable. Um, yeah. And you then combine this to form the actual ge uh, geo object by supplying the location and the drawables for the camera to the constructor of the geo object. And that's all it takes to uh, put an object into augmented reality using the architect API. 
So besides the geolocation, which uh, uh, you have to uh, like absolute use this absolute positioning via latitude and longitude, you also have the possibility to put objects uh, in um, relative to the user or to another location, which is often useful because you want to, for example, say um, um, at the at a certain latitude longitude, but a relative 100 meters to the east or to north, for example. Then um, this is also quite interesting. Uh, this is a more complex uh, drawable that you can uh, put onto a geo object. It uses again HTML to um, to yeah to render what you want to display. And it's as simple as creating the HTML drawable and giving it uh, either an HTML URL or uh, the HTML uh, itself. And that will get rendered by our system and then pu put into uh, the augmented reality scene. Um, we've put in animation, meaning uh, we wanted to make it more visually uh, appealing to the user and also to give the the user clues if objects move from one position to the other. So um, we allow any numeric property to uh, be animated. So you can have objects moving from one side to the other side, uh, appearing smoothly with an opacity animation, for example, and that stuff. As well as we have sprite animation, which is kind of the same as animated GIFs. Uh, it's a little bit more, but um, basically you have uh, different keyframes and you can define um, in what order you want to, to animate those keyframes. And if I, for example, animate the top row here, the bird starts to flap. Um, we've also added animation group, which allows you to um, uh, combine property animations into groups and to have them executed in parallel or sequ sequential, which allows you to, to um, create um, more complex uh, animations quite easily. We've also uh, added 3D transformation. Um, those allow you to um, um, rotate the, the objects around the three axes. Usually you have the objects oriented directly to the user, but this allows you to have, for example, this Euro coin to rotate uh, around itself. Um, the radar is a concept that's uh, quite often used in augmented reality browser. It's uh, basically for uh, the user experience. So the user has a way of knowing what objects are around him and in what direction the objects are. Um, and if we look here, um, when the user turns the device, this will actually rotate um, and showing the, the user um, where the points are in what direction they are. And we made it fully customizable, so you can um, define what the background is. You can define how the points look on the on the radar. For example, here this point is actually selected, so it uh, uh, also changes its rep representation on the radar. Um, and we have this north indicator here and here that also moves around as the user turns the device, um, and that's also customizable. Um, another uh, thing for, for the user to orient in the augmented reality world is the direction indicator. The direction indicator is comparable to what you might know from um, fighter plane simulation where enemies are, that are off screen are displayed uh, on the side of the screen with a little indicator. And you can use that, for example, to uh, tell the user he should be turning around because you want to have him looking at another direction. And uh, this is as simple. Um, here we have this um, geo object again, and now I want, uh, I just said drawables.indicator um, and set, the, set it to, for example, this image. Okay, now. Let's have a look at the image recognition uh, add-on. It's used um, to recognize, for example, this logo, our logo, 
in the camera feed. And once it recognizes it, it allows you to overlay information on top of the logo. And what we did here in one of our examples is to overlay our normal Wikitude logo with the architect logo and have some arrows pointing on uh, towards it. Um, how it works is that you define your images you want to recognize. Um, and this is done um, via a website. And it actually creates a tracker for you. Uh, that's a zip file, and within this zip file, um, there's all the information the algorithms need to visual uh, to recognize the images in the um, in the camera feed. And you can have multiple images, so you c I, th I think it's up to 60 uh, images that can be recognized uh, uh, with this um, single tracker. Um, and to visualize certain images, you just define their name. Uh, once you create the object. And once again, uh, this drawable uh, cam uh, is used to um, tell the API what should be overlaid on top of, of the camera. Um, so we allow to uh, combine image recognition and geo-based AR, and that's, for example, useful if you have some kind of printed materials and you want the user to scan it, um, you then, for example, overlay uh, your shop logo in color, have some buttons around it, and one of the buttons could be to get the user a deal for your shop, and the other button could be to um, search for nearby um, shop locations and have those shop locations again, visualized in AR so the user knows where your shops are in his surrounding. Um, this is actually one of our examples that's included with the SDK. Okay. Um, well, um, as a summary, um, I want to stress that all you need is um, knowledge of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, Therefore, it's very easy to get uh, started. You have, um, yeah, um, you just write a single HTML page, and the initial setup can be done in less than five minutes. Um, as you've probably seen, uh, it just takes a few lines of code to actually create the ag augmented reality ex experience, um, and you then um, De deploy the once developed application to a whole range of um, uh, OSs. And yeah, um, if you want to get more information, um, probably download the SDK. You can go to our website, wikidude.com. Um, we have a forum there as well, which we uh, try to monitor um, quite fre frequently. So just go there if you have any question. Um, and they get answered pretty fast. Yeah, we also have a knowledge base where uh, you can find all the um, tutorials and um, examples explained and also additional information to common practices and that stuff. Okay, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, since we are using um, C++ OpenGL rendering in the back end, uh, it's pretty fast for the rendering stuff. Um, actually, I have it here on a screenshot. We did a test with 500 animated birds, and they were not just flapping their wings. They were all, uh, also going up and down, and that was easily possible on a, um, I think that was done on an iPhone 4. Yeah. OK, if there aren't any more questions, I'd like to thank you. And I'll be here for a while, so just grab me if you have any questions. <laughs>